Welcome, Welcome everyone, everyone to this, this joyful joy day. day. For those for of you those that are traveling, traveling, and for those that you that live close by, we welcome you, and the church is truly rejoicing. Let us begin our celebration by focusing our thoughts and our presence into God's love, by placing ourselves under his sign. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Grace to you, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. O oh God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery that in the wedding covenant you foreshadow the sacrament of Christ and his church, grant, we pray, to these your servants that what they receive in faith they may live out in deed. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the word of God. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper suited to him. So the Lord God formed out of the ground various wild animals and various birds of the air. And he brought them to man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called each living creature was then its name. The man gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of the air, and all the wild animals, but none proved to be a suitable partner for him. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man, and while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. When he brought her to the man, the man said, this one at last, sorry, <laughs> this one at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one has been taken. This is why a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife. And the two of them become one body, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Good 
St. Paul to the Romans. I, ur I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to his age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. Let love be sincere, hate what is evil, hold on to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Anticipate one another in showing honor. Do not grow slack in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Endure in affliction. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the holy ones. Exercise hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Have the same regard for one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Do not repay evil for evil. Be concerned for what is noble in the sight of all. If possible, on your part, live at peace with all. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, as the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in His love. I have told you this so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. The Gospel of the Lord. Of the gospel. Please be seated. <laughs> Each one of us, when created by God in His image and likeness, is given a mission. A mission that only you can complete. Nobody else can complete your mission. 
St. Augustine of Hippo, one of the early church fathers, wrote about this and about his own journey and how he came to discover that his journey was was not about him seeking God, but how God was tirelessly seeking him. John and Rachel, the individual journey that you were on and you've both been on during your entire lives crossed paths and kind of took a turn over two years ago in Little Place while they were listening to some piano music which shall remain unnamed (laughs) at a small out of the way place in Aggieland I knew it. it. (laughs) And also, who would have thought that Ducks Unlimited would have played a role into your two journeys becoming one? Bringing you here today to the church where some of your family and relatives have come before kneeling at that same altar in Holy Mother Church. Coming is truly rejoicing and joyful. And in our conversations that we've had, other people could listen to these conversations and think, oh, well, that was a coincidence. But I think we know better that what we had have experienced is the hand of God working in their lives, guiding them here, this day, at this time, to enter into a covenant with God and to receive the sacrament of marriage. Now, the sacrament of marriage, we need to look no further than the readings that you chose for your wedding today to get a better understanding. A better understanding of marriage. Not what we hear from our secular world, but God's plan for marriage. Which is not of this world. In Genesis, Uncle John read for us today, that the two of them become one body, a lifelong partnership that only derives its force and its strength from God the Creator. And as faithful Christians, this partnership, this lifelong partnership, is elevated to a higher dignity, a sacrament instituted by Christ in the New Covenant. And in St. Paul's epistle to the Romans today, he urges us to offer ourselves as a sacrifice, a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, in imitation of Christ's sacrifice of himself back to the Father, and in imitation of Christ's love for us, the church. And this partnership where no where spouses are no longer two but one flesh is a sacred bond with love that is sincere and shows honor for one another. Jesus Christ, in elevating marriage to a sacrament, will that marriage be restored to its original plan and its original holiness. In the gospel reading today, John tells us that through the loving relationship of the Father and the Son, the sacrament of marriage calls you to remain in his love. And to love one another as he loves us. 
And with God's grace through the sacraments, you have the strength and the duty to work for one another to obtain your eternal reward. So John and Rachel, the good news, God has called you to the vocation of marriage. The better news, he will continue to call you to the vocation of marriage. Because through this sacrament, you receive the graces needed to persevere in good times and in bad. And for those who marry in Christ and who are faithful to God's word, they're able to live their marriage as a public witness for all of us to see. And it is truly joyful. You are no longer two, but one in the flesh and in spirit. And because you no longer live, it is Christ that now lives in you as one. And may you live to see your children's children, maybe even graduate from me. Amen. Please stand. Please Dearly beloved, you have come together into the house of the church so that in the presence of the church's minister and the community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you through a special sacrament. He enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism, that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so, in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. Rachel and John, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, Freely and wholeheartedly. I have. Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? I am. Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? Since it is your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, join your right hand and declare your consent before God and his church. John, repeat after me. I, John, take you, Rachel, to be my wife. I, John, take you, Rachel, to be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. Good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. Sickness and in health. To love you and honor you. love you and honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life.
Rachel, repeat that. I, Rachel, take you, John, to be my husband. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. To love you and honor you all the days of my life. May the Lord in his kindness strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God has joined, men must not divide. What God has joined, men must not divide. What God has joined, men must not divide. The ring. Bless, O Lord, these rings, which we bless in your name, so that those who wear them may remain entirely faithful to each other, abide in peace and in your will, and live always in mutual charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. You go first. Repeat after me. Rachel, Rachel received this, this ring, ring. Rachel received this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Repeat that. John received this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. How about a little round of applause? <laughs> Dear brothers and sisters, let us accompany this new family with our prayers that the mutual love of this couple may grow daily and that God in his kindness will sustain all families throughout the world. Your response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For Rachel and John and for their well-being as a family, let us pray to the Lord. For their relatives and friends, and for all who have assisted this couple, let us pray to the Lord. For all families throughout the world, and for lasting peace among all people, let us pray to the Lord. And for all members of our families who have passed from this world, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. And for the church, the holy people of God, and for unity among all Christians, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, who are present in our midst as Rachel and John seal their union, accept our prayer and fill us with your spirit who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. I Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to the Lord that on these his servants, now married in Christ, he may mercifully pour out the blessing of his grace and make of one heart in love those he has joined in a holy covenant. O oh God, who by your mighty power 
created all things out of nothing. And when you had set in place the beginnings of the universe, formed man and woman in your own image, making the woman an inseparable helpmate to the man, that they might no longer be two, but one flesh, and taught that what you were pleased to make one must never be divided. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery, that in the wedding covenant you foreshadowed the sacrament of Christ and his church. O God, by whom woman is joined to man, and the companionship they had in the beginning is endowed with the one blessing, not forfeited by original sin, nor washed away by the flood. Look now with favor on these your servants, joined together in marriage, who ask to be strengthened by your blessing. Send down on them the grace of the Holy Spirit and pour your love into their hearts, that they may remain faithful in the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter, Rachel, and let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in scriptures. May her husband entrust his heart to her so that acknowledging her as his equal and his joint heir to the life of grace, he may show her due honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his church. And now, Lord, we implore you, may these your servants hold fast to the faith and keep your commandments made in one flesh. May they be blameless in all they do. And with the strength that comes from the gospel, may they bear true witness to Christ before all. May they be blessed with children and prove themselves virtuous parents who live to see their children's children. And grant that reaching at last together the fullness of years for which they hope they may come to the life of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. Please stand. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. After the resurrection, Jesus went back to the upper room, breathed on them, and said, Receive my peace. So let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace, peace.
Please be seated. You, can, you may kneel if you're able. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be.
body of Christ. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. The body of Christ. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us pray. Having been made partakers at your table, we pray, O Lord, that those who are united by the sacrament of marriage may always hold fast to you and proclaim your name to the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God, the all-powerful Father, May God, the all-powerful Father, grant you his joy and bless you in your children. Amen. May the only begotten Son of God stand by you with compassion in good times and in bad. Amen. May the Holy Spirit of God always pour forth his love into your hearts. Amen. And may Almighty God Bless all of you who are here today, gathered in his name, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I present to you Mr. and Mrs. John Broderick. You may kiss me. So good. 